in the 1870s, I believe it was, as part of a limited edition book. We have a copy of that book. And as it turns out, we have testimony from everyone except John and Alice Proctor. We also do not have a verdict. Uh, we got all the way down there, we end up with Skinner and Nail. And it's all over. It stops. It goes on to another topic. We have no idea from the record what happened to these people. However, the charges that they were hit with, murder, manslaughter, and chance medley, which quite honestly we didn't even know about until we started going into this thing. We thought it was something with broccoli. But. <laughs> Turns out that these are all possible scenarios. And as Victoria mentioned to you, Chance Medley is you're doing something perfectly legal and the case they give us is a carpenter working on a roof and he yells out, I'm going to throw a board down, tosses the board, hits a guy in the head, who so after to walk out of the building, he dies. That's Chance Medley. Act of God would call it to death. Okay. These are all death sentences as near as we can tell. Chance Medley. Yes. Has to do with um, your property, quite honestly, whether you're tainted and your property is confiscated. But you are still guilty of killing someone. The question is, is it something that happened randomly, or is this something that will be causing you to lose your property for generations? And Chance Medley would be, you're guilty, but it doesn't affect you. It's the bother and all that. So we don't know what happened to them, but since Alice Proctor gives trial testimony about a year later, we can pretty much say that Alice was found not guilty, because any of the guilty verdicts would have resulted, as you saw with John, in a death sentence. John himself will receive property, another hundred acres of property, for paying for two servants to come over with him. And as a result, we know that he survived this trial. Therefore, the only verdict that could have been passed on them is not guilty. Can we prove it? Nope. Uh, well, but yeah. the, <laughs> evidence, the evidence is they're still breathing a year later. Yeah. They survived. It must be not guilty. We the just don't have a doctor. And the funny part of this is that Alice Proctor, if she was found not guilty, or was found guilty in any way with this murder, take a guess what her death sentence would have been. Whipping. Burning. 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 She is acting contrary to her nature as a woman. Ladies, please do not attack when I say this, but we do understand in the 17th century that you are slightly feeble and are only capable of certain things. We have science to back this up. 17th century science, but the science nonetheless. So a crime committed by a woman normally results in a lesser penalty, unless she is acting against her nature, which Having a girl beat to death with fish hooks is acting against her nurturing nature and would have increased the penalty, which means burning. And you, you may have heard mentioned, uh, Master was it Gates, or mentioned that uh, her activities among the Powhatan during the uprising. In the 1622 Powhatan uprising, um, Mistress Proctor survived, was it three weeks? Three weeks. Defending herself in her house mm -hmm. with muskets, uh, without her husband around. So she was tough already. Uh, but that, as he just describes, is against a woman's nature, so that already counts against her in a case like this. Today we go wild, give her a medal. For, for those who aren't aware, um, Alice and John Proctor live approximately where that power plant sits today. That's about where their farm was. So it is right here at Henricus in 1622. They end up back east in Surrey County after we never return here. But the trial takes place in 24 at Jamestown but it is tied to people directly here. One other thing we brought up in it, um, hopefully some caught it, is that if a mistress corrects a servant, it is grounds, legal grounds for the servant to void the contract, the indenture. So John may correct her, but Alice may not. If Alice corrects, then the contract is void and she can seek employment elsewhere, or he if the case is, is male. That is written into English common law. So the servants, for those who may think that indentured servitude is one step from slavery, no. Anybody in this group ever raised their head and hand and said, I swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States? 
Yeah, congratulations, you've all been indentured servants. Yeah. Yeah. Might have felt like it, but nobody here was a slave, were they? No, no. Wait a minute, what did you want to bring? What we'd like to do is um, open up the floor to all of you, uh, any questions you may have. And if there's any questions, and you have a specific question towards any of the past, um, Feel free to ask them. We can do it here, or we're going to be breaking in a few moments. You can follow them outside, haunt them, if that's all right. Uh, Why do you have to say? I just I like that word. Uh, but I will say this about Alice Proctor. There's a lot of interesting things about her. We recently, as far as the last five years doing research here, have only just found out about the Proctors. Uh, they're kind of a buried story, yet in John Smith's own writings, which everyone reads, he in there mentions Alice Proctor uh, as being this hero, essentially, of the colony. Uh, but you don't have him writing on what happens to her much after. Um, she does actually, from what we know, try to have children every year uh, between these years and after. And every single child uh, dies, apparently, one. except for one. one child so we're not sure what that did to her. You know, there's many reasons why uh, she could have been affected. But, um, Needless to say, she's one of our most famous women in Henry's. Is the child a man or a female? Good. 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 It's only been four years. <laughs> so so we, want, we want some really good grilling questions because we've been waiting all week for this. So I'd like, like to let the audience know that this is not their last time in court. Uh, 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 sometime <laughs> after this, they were actually brought back in court for stealing another man's boat. So the Proctors are kind of an iffy little couple. <laughs> but we also, uh, Alice and another guy uh, is brought to court for killing a uh, neighbor's pig yes, that didn't belong to pig. them. But they are acquitted of that because the, the man couldn't prove it. And there was another other instances where someone borrowed one of our boats and didn't bring it back or owes us money and so John Proctor is in court again for that and then another point John Proctor is in court um, almost as like a lawyer for somebody. Yeah. So and Alice gives testimony against um, John Martin or Martin Brandon later on. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's a sketchy character. So we're there for for being accused and for helping people that are accused yeah. and it might seem like we're in court a lot but there's not that many English people here. So, and yeah. we've been here, at least John has been here since the beginning with Thomas Dale, so yeah. Yeah. they're going to look to him a little bit. Did, did you have a question, then? Yeah, I, I didn't exactly hear what he did with the ring. I didn't know that you needed to keep pulling this tail. Yeah. And it's 
Yes, and I can get it to wrap around, and that's it. Yes. <laughs> Bag on his head. <laughs> <laughs> I just have some notes that have been sweltering in my pocket today. <laughs> hey, uh, I will give my uh, my torch man a signal when I'm ready. All right, very good. All right, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, John. I am the historical interpretation supervisor here at Henricus. And this program today was about crimes and punishments in the Virginia colony. And uh, what we're going to be doing here to close the event, I guess you would say, uh, is to actually show you the most severe form of a punishment that could be inflicted on a human being uh, by the courts uh, in this time period of the early 1600s. And that is to be burned uh, at the stake. By the early 1600s, this is not a normal form of execution. This is not something that's even going to really keep going too much longer here in America. Um, but what we're doing today is actually to uh, show you how one man, just one, here in Virginia was executed. And that man was Mr. Collins. Master Collins uh, apparently murdered his wife at Jamestown during the starving time, uh, preserved her flesh, and was eating her uh, to keep alive through the starving time. He was found out. Uh, he was found guilty, obviously, of a crime... A, of all sorts. It's against law, it's against God, against humanity. This would be the punishment. Usually people that get burned, most of them in England are women. This is not a normal guy's punishment. So here he is. So um, just a couple of things. If you um, know anybody, anything about English history, how many of you have ever heard of Bloody Mary? <laughs> of course. All right. She sent about 300 people to death like this. And they were all what religion? Protestants. Protestants. Very good. Uh, Queen Elizabeth comes to power, uh, completely switches the, you know, things over. Uh, there's only going to be four people during her reign who are burned at the stake. So that brings us to King James during our period here, uh, certainly in the Virginia colony. Uh, and James really, he's not, he's not big on it either. However, he is going to sentence another man, Edward Whiteman, to death by the stake in 1612. Uh, and what would a man be burned for? Treason. Treason, but more specifically, what form of treason? High treason. High treason. Tre against what? The king. the king. Well, the king in this case was a moderate, so he could not save Whiteman because of his heresy against the church. So, he committed crimes of treason against God and country. 
and the church. All right, so that would be Whiteman. That would be in 1612. And he would be the last man burned in England in 1612. So our man Collins in 1610, nine? Probably 10. 10, yeah, Probably yeah. Spring of he, 10. He's pretty much near the end of that whole line of men being burned. Now here in America, different colonies, different people get burned. Most specifically, women and slaves will get burned, but no men, not really, not too often. All right, so anyway, Collins, he is going to get sentenced to be burned. This is probably the form of punishment that was enacted for him. Uh, the one thing we want to caution you to is that for any purpose, this is not an amusement. This is to show you um, how this would go down. Uh, so when we light it, you're certainly going to get a chance to uh, uh, see and per put yourself in perspective of the person in the middle. So the convicted, he would be given his last chance for words. He would say his last words. Would be led in there and would be chained to that. Most often his hands would be free. His hands were able to do whatever he wanted to. Pray, put him up, whatever he wanted to do. So that would be his last act of the living. If we were really, really merciful on him, we would tie a bag of gunpowder around his neck. So when the flames got to him, his head would explode. So, but do you think Collins, who ate his wife, is going to get that? No. No. All right. So here we go. Well, what they 
Hopefully before the flames really got to him, he was down for smoke inhalation. All right. Um, what's going to happen once it breaks down where hair catches, clothing catches, the next thing that catches on the body that calls, causes the organs to fail is the fat in your skin catches fire. So you literally sizzle uh, like a piece of bacon. And then, um, of course, you die really quickly after that. So a fire like this probably would have taken two minutes or so. If they really didn't like you, they would have dampened all the wood and they would have let the fire slowly get you. And it would have taken probably more than five to ten. So this, this is definitely not a good way for you to go. Uh, but again, um, let me ask you, what's that part of our legal world that we, uh, when we think that somebody's been killed or punished too wrongly, what, what do we call that? Cruel All right, would you call this cruel and unusual? Yes. <laughs> Today you would. It Back then they were it. still thinking, oh, maybe, maybe not, but <laughs> this is the way. Um, so now, once the fire really burns everything through, then what we have essentially is um, what's left of the body, charred and all. They take that off the post, they break it up with iron rods, crushing the bones, the skull, everything. They pulverize the bones, throw it back on the ashes and fire, uh, and then what happens to everything? Everything burns. Yeah, what you're gonna be left with if you don't do that is like a skull and bones intact, and um, what would happen to those things uh, once the rats find out and such? They're gonna scurry off with them. So what they wanted to do was to fully purify uh, the condemned, and they throw everything in until it's all burned. Every ounce of the human being is gone, and that would be burning at the stake. All right. Any questions? Or normally given lesser punishment. But if the crime is heinous enough, um, a woman who murders her husband, that's considered petty treason. It is a crime against her nature because it's murder. It's a male crime. So she will be burned. For a man to commit treason, this is a mercy, folks. Anybody ever see Braveheart? Yeah. Remember what happens to William Wallace at the end of it? Yeah. Yep. That is a rather cleaned up, but still quite vivid example of what happens to somebody who commits treason. You are hung by the neck and cut down while still alive. They open your belly and remove your entrails. And they stretch them, they pull them out, and then they throw them on the fire and burn them in front of you. You're not dead yet, guys. All right? They will eventually, when you finally do die, continue to take you apart, ultimately putting your head on a pike, uh, usually on Tower Bridge. Your uh, limbs are sent to the four major um, cities in the kingdom, and your torso might be left hanging on, on the tower for the ravens to eat. In addition, not only do you lose what property you had, but as I mentioned earlier, it tainted. Your family loses everything. And that crime will haunt them for, in some cases, forever. That if, if you are John Smith who committed treason against the king, 200 years later, your family is still Smith. Isn't he the guy who committed treason against the king? One of those deals. So it carries on much, much longer. So for a man to get this is actually kind of a mercy compared to that. Uh, we have a fella here in 1610. A Spanish ship comes up. And uh, the, the guy in charge of the ship, a fellow named Diego de Molina, and his pilot are captured. A fellow named um, Lemke? Lemmy? Lemmy, I think it is, are captured here in Virginia. They're Spaniards getting ready to raid Virginia. Problem is, turns out Lemmy is actually an Englishman. And he was 
going to lead the Spanish Armada up the Thames in 1588. How do you think that went over when they figured out he was English and they caught him here in Virginia? They put him on the same boat, interestingly enough, that Pocahontas and John Rolfe and Thomas Dale are going back to England on. When they get within sight of England, they string him up. That sounds pretty harsh. But the alternative was to let him set foot in England where he would be given the traitor's death. So the sailors who hung him from the yard arm are actually being merciful to him. Because as long as they're at sea, the captain of the boat makes the law. So they're going to hang this guy rather than taking him up to Tower Hill and doing really evil things to him. So when we look at the harshness by our standards, that's pretty evil. But by their standards, in some ways, that can be a mercy compared to what they're doing. So that's kind of why they're doing the burning rather than um, yeah. the others. If it goes, I mean, if it goes right, like I said, <clears throat> if they put the accelerant, you're talking a couple of minutes yeah. versus a drawing and quartering, which is that could take an hour or more. Yeah. So now, if they don't like you, they're going to put green wood out there, and it's the smoke that's going to do you, and that might take as would you say 20 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. But some of the accounts of these burnings that we found, they're pretty bad. Yeah. Really, really bad. I mean, this doesn't even begin to, to get into some of that stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you could, uh, I just, I planned this event and my staff carried it out, uh, researching all the stuff that we did, all the people you see dressed here today. Could you give them a hand for the work they did? <laughs> Thank you for you for coming out. Uh, we do have some weather coming in. Um, so you can stay around as long as we're open until 5. Uh, but 